So what I'm trying to make here is a micro bit remote control car. So I'm using the Moto bit from SparkFun and there's a lot of different motor driver boards out there but I really like this one because I find just the different ways you attach things there's less wires. So what I started out with for building the car itself I just took a piece of wood, thin piece of wood and it's pretty sturdy so it works pretty well. For the moto bit, I was able to screw it right down onto my wood. Uh, I've got these geared motors here, and I just used hot glue and hot glued them on. And then I believe these are old Lego robotics wheels. And I found <clears throat> that the geared motors fit pretty well in there, and I just put a little bit of hot glue to make sure they stay. On the back wheel, I wanted this to thing to be able to turn on a dime. So my back wheel, I had one that can pivot so that the car can spin. And I just used Lego for that. So it could come right off. So I just drilled a hole in here. Took one of these Lego pieces, glued it over top, and then my wheel looks like that and you can just put it in and put the little piece on top to cap it and just by sliding this yellow piece up or down I can adjust it too so I can get the height right. <clears throat> um, what I've got is I've got one of these barrel jack to 9 volt cords and I really like this so the moto bit takes a barrel jack and I can get lots of power out of a 9 volt battery so then that just connects there and then I would take some tape or something tape my battery down your micro bit slides in here and you're gonna get power from the 9 volt battery so you don't have to worry about your external battery pack now what I did for the motors and wiring them into the board is I took an alligator clip and I just cut the end off and stripped back the plastic. But you can get alligator clips with pigtail ends. So those would work a lot better because in the moto bit there's you've got two spots for your motors here, your left motor and right motor. So if you had a pigtail end it would work a bit better but I can still slide this in there and then just clip on I've got two leads here so I can just clip onto there and then of course I would need another one to go here and then hook up my other motor so that's what my car looks like and we're gonna work on we're gonna put one micro bit in here and it'll be the receiver it's going to receive information from another micro bit we'll be holding. And if you tilt the micro bit, we're going to get the car to go forward. If you tilt it back, we'll get it to go backwards. And left and right, we'll get it to turn. So let's give the coding a try. So we're ready to start coding the micro bits now. So the first one we're going to do is the easier one. And that's the one that you're going to hold. So it'll be like your remote controller. The one that's actually attached onto the car is a little bit harder. So first thing we're going to do is go into our basic blocks and we're going to get a an on start block. And just to make it easier to tell the two micro bits apart, let's show an icon on the screen. So you can pick whatever you want. So for the remote controller, I'm going to do I'll do the check mark and then what we need to do is go to a radio and we need to set our radio group and we just have to make sure that when we code both these micro bits they're on the same radio group it's kind of like channels for a walkie-talkie so if you have one set to one channel and another to a different channel they're not going to be able to communicate to each other so now that our radio set group is done we're going to go to basic again. We're going to get a forever loop. 
and we're going to get this one to keep sending information to the micro bit on the car. So we want it to send uh, X and Y values. So X being us tilting the micro bit forwards and backwards and Y being us tilting it left and right. And that's how we'll control the car. So forever. And then if we go to radio, we're going to get it to send a value. So it's going to send a value with a name attached to it. So we're going to send, we'll call it X. And what we're going to send is the acceleration uh, in X, but we're going to need to first divide that by 10 because the uh, motor driver board, the motors are going to be looking for powers from 0% to 100%. So if we go to math, and grab a divide by symbol. So the X values that it's gonna send could be anywhere from zero to 1080. So if we divide the X values by 100, then we'll be close to returning values from zero to 100, which is what the motors need. Or sorry, we're gonna need to divide that by 10. And we'll be close to zero to 100. So what we want to send here is the acceleration in the X plane. So if we go to input acceleration X, so we can shrink that a little bit. <clears throat> so now we're sending the X values. And just so we give the receiving micro bit some time to process, we're going to put a weight block in there. So we're gonna go basic, pause, and we can just pause for 100 microseconds. And then we're gonna do the same thing for Y. So shortcut here is just double click on this, duplicate. And instead of X, we're gonna send the Y value as well. Change this to Y. And we're gonna wait again after we've sent the Y. So we'll wait for 100 microseconds. So now you can go ahead and download this onto your micro bit and this will be your controller. Okay, so I did some testing and I found that I had way too much power in the motors. Uh, they were just, the car was going out of control and it was going so fast I couldn't control it. So instead of dividing by 10 here, I'm gonna divide by 15 just so I can back the motor speed off a little bit and that should work better. So then I'll download that and next we'll look at the code for getting uh, the motors to actually move. So now we're gonna code the micro bit that'll be on the car and controls the motors. So this is the one that's gonna have to receive those X and Y values from our remote control micro bit. And so I learned how to code this. There's an instructables um, called remote controlled micro bit robot by Huffy. And that's where I learned how to do this code. So if you want any more information on it, you can look up that instructables. It's got a write up about the code and how it works. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to use this on start block and I used a check mark for the controller. So this one, we're gonna use a different symbol. I'll use the X. And this again is just to help keep the micro bits separate and easy to tell which one's which. We also need to go to radio and set our radio group to the same as what we did for the controller. So I had it at one on the controller. So we'll have this one set to one as well. Then we're gonna to have to go to variables and we're gonna make two variables. We're gonna call one the X value. And we're gonna create another one and call that Y value. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set both of those to zero. So if we grab a set item to zero, 
So on the start, we'll set the X value to zero. And if I right click here and duplicate, you can also set the Y value to zero. And we got to start the Moto bit now. So if we go up here to this little gear, we have to add a package. And when we do this, we can find some useful blocks that are pre-made for the Moto bit. So I'll just search Moto bit in here. And there's this is what we're using. So I'll click on that. And now down here, we have all these Moto bit blocks. So one difference between the Moto bit and some other motor driver boards is you have to actually put a turn motors on block in. So if we grab this, let's just put it under here. So on start, we'll show this icon. We'll set our radio group to one, set the X and Y values to zero, and we'll turn the motors on. Okay, so that part's done. Now we got to deal with our numbers when we receive them, our values. So we're going to go to radio and we're going to grab a on radio received name value block. And then inside of this, we're going to go to logic and we're going to put an if then else. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if the name it receives, so the name is here. If the name equals X, then we're going to set X value, which is the variable we just wrote, to the value it's receiving. So whatever number it gets will be stored in the variable X value. So someone once explained variables to me that described them as being like pockets. So you can store something inside a variable so that you can pull it out of the pocket later. Okay, so to write that, we're going to go to logic and we'll grab this equals. And then we're going to say if variable. So if the name we're receiving from the other micro bit equals, and we've got to go to advanced, we'll scroll down to text, we'll grab this quotations one. So if the name we receive equals X, then we're going to set X value. So variables set X value to the value we are receiving from the other micro bit. So variables value okay so now we're storing our x value but now we need to store the y value so inside of here we're going to get another if then block so logic if then so now <clears throat> if it's not named x it's going to go down here and if it's named y then we'll do the same thing so let's save ourselves some time. We'll right click here, duplicate, and I missed. There we go. So now this time, if the name equals Y, I'll just get rid of this block. So now if the name equals Y, then we're gonna set Y value to value. So let's duplicate. And we'll select that Y value variable we just wrote. So whatever value it sends, if it's named Y, it's going to store it in the Y value variable. Okay, so now we've got our data stored. We've got our values stored. So now we have to actually control the motors. And this is probably the trickiest and most illogical part for me anyway. So we're going to use the forever loop. And we're going to write two more variables. So one for the left wheel. So we can call it left wheel. Okay. 
and one for the right wheel. So make a variable, right wheel, okay. So now forever, we want to set left wheel to, so we'll go to variables. And we'll set left wheel to, and we're going to set the left wheel to the Y value we receive plus the X value we receive. So to do that, we need to go to math first and get one of these addition blocks. And we're going to set Y value, so variables, or sorry, set left wheel to Y value. Back to variables again. Grab our X value. So set left wheel to Y value plus X value. And let's right click here and duplicate this because we're going to do the same thing for the right wheel. Well, not the same thing, but we're going to use the same block. So set the right wheel to, but this time it's going to be Y value. Subtract the X value. So now we can go to our logic and we'll get an if then else block. And if the left wheel, so if this variable is greater than zero, then we're gonna get the motor to move forward at whatever speed, at whatever number is in the left wheel variable. So we're gonna go to logic, we can grab a greater than less than symbol block. Let's flip this. And we're going to say if left wheel, so variables, if left wheel is greater than zero. Now here's where we're going to do some stuff with the motor blocks. So we'll go to moto bit and we'll move left motor forward. So if left wheel is greater than zero, move the left motor forward and we're not going to do it at 50%. We're going to do it at whatever value, whatever numbers in the left wheel var variable. So we'll grab a left wheel. So now if we tilt, by doing it this way, if we tilt the micro bit more, then that motor is going to go faster. If we tilt it less, it's going to go slower. And if it's not greater than zero, then we want to why don't we duplicate this? So if it's not greater than zero, we're gonna move left motor and reverse. And it's gonna move at the absolute of the left wheel. So we'll take no, nope, we'll take the left wheel variable out. And we're gonna put an absolute so that if it returns a negative value. So if we go into math. And we go to more, then here's the absolute of block. So we'll put that in here first, and now we'll put the left wheel variable inside of that. So now if we're getting a negative number for the um, left wheel variable, then it's just gonna take the absolute of that because the motors aren't gonna know what to do with the negative number. Okay, so the left wheel's finished. We're gonna do the same thing for the right wheel. So we might as well just go up to here and right click and duplicate our if then else block. Put it inside the forever loop. And this time, instead of the left wheel variable, we're looking at right wheel. So if right wheel is greater than zero, we're gonna move not the left motor this time, we're gonna move the right motor forward at and not left wheel. Actually, don't have to take that out. I can just switch it, hit the drop down, switch it to right wheel. So if right wheel is greater than zero, then move right motor forward at right wheel. Variable is the speed. And if it's not, we're gonna move, we need to switch this. We're gonna move right motor in reverse at the absolute value of, and not the left wheel, we'll switch this to right wheel. Okay, so that 
should do it. We should have everything in there. So if we check back up here, we remember to turn the motors on. So let's download it and try it out. So now the fun part, we're gonna try this out. So this one, this micro bit should be the one that was gonna be like our remote controller. So if I plug the battery pack in, it's showing the check mark. So that means it was the right one. So the check mark was the one we put on the controller. And <clears throat> on the moto bit, one thing I gotta make sure I remember to do is to actually turn the motors on. So there's a switch here to start your motors. And I just gotta plug my battery in. So plug in my battery. This one's showing the X. So I know I've got the right one in there. And I'll flip this switch. And try to drive it around. All right. We can do some awesome wheelies. Well, it's working. And I even find that uh, it's working pretty well. I might even back that power off a little bit more because I find it a little bit difficult to control.